Now, before the Civil War, blacks could not fight in the Army. The Militia Act of 1795, which basically was the rubric for not the regular Army, but volunteer units all around the country, limited militia service only to whites. No, blacks could not serve in the militia anywhere in the United States, with the one exception which we mentioned of New Orleans, where coming from the French days, there was a black militia unit all the way before the Civil War. Um, and the regular army excluded blacks also in the decades before the Civil War. Um, and from the, um, from the beginning of the war, African-American men in the North, now the black population of the North when the war begins is like 220,000. Now let's assume half of them are women and a lot of the 110,000 men are old or too young, so the number who in the North who can actually serve is fairly small, but still people volunteered right at the beginning of the war like anybody else, but they were told no, the arm, this is a white man's war, we do not want blacks in the army, no room for you. Now throughout 1861 and 62, black leaders, particularly Frederick Douglass, kept insisting on the necessity of enlisting blacks in the army. He said colored men in one of his, in speeches and newspaper articles, colored men were good enough to fight under, under George Washington, but they are not good enough to fight under McClellan. Now he's right in that George, black men did fight in the Continental Army during the American Revolution. He forgot to mention that Washington at first excluded blacks from the army. The only reason they started recruiting blacks was when the British did. Remember Lord Dunmore, I mentioned that a long time ago, some others. The British started recruiting slaves into their forces and that led the Continental Government, the Revolutionary Government, to open the army to black men so they wouldn't be fighting for the British. But it is true, the Continental Army under George Washington eventually became the last integrated army for the United States until the Korean War, right? It was, the army was, seg was either excluded blacks or was racially segregated all the way up into the time that President Truman integrated the army in the late 1940s. But nonetheless, Douglas insisted it was essential to put blacks in the army. The side which first summons the Negro will conquer. The South will arm her slaves sooner than submit to defeat. The only question is whether they or we shall use black troops, on which side the four million blacks will fight. And by 1862, Douglas was quite bitter about the refusal of the Lincoln administration to allow African Americans in the army. I am quite sure, he wrote, that this country will come to the conclusion that McClellan is either a cold-blooded traitor or an unmitigated military imposter. Abraham Lincoln, is no more fit for the place he holds than was James Buchanan. The, Douglas was pretty, pretty strong in his language condemning Lincoln at this point. In 1862, there were some black leaders who said, why should blacks try to fight in this army anyway? They don't want us, we're not treated equally, we have no rights, we can't vote, we can't go to school. Blacks shouldn't volunteer, moreover, jobs were opening in the North, you know, that as white men were drawn off into the army, as the economy was given a boost from the war, jobs were opening for African Americans that they had been excluded from before the war. And many people said, well, let's take advantage of this. Why go into the army when for the first time we have an opportunity to get better jobs? Well, from the beginning of the war, as I have said that the Army could not ignore African Americans, starting with Ben Butler at Fortress Monroe, remember, May 1861. African Americans are coming to Union, these are Southern slaves, coming to Union lines, and they are employed by the Army in every capacity except combat soldier. They are made military laborers, they are made cooks, they are made teamsters to haul things around. They're employed in all sorts of ways. So if you see pictures of army encampments, Union army encampments in 1862 or late 61, well, you'll see a lot of blacks around. They just don't happen to be soldiers. By the way, we'll get to this in a bit. You'll also see, when you see pictures of Confederate army encampments, there are plenty of African Americans around. Many 
Confederate officers brought slaves with them to wait on them, to be their servants during the war, and blacks were impressed by the army, again, just to do work. The government went around seizing slaves in order to work for the Confederate army, to the same way in the North, to build things and dig things and transport things and to be cooks and all sorts of uh, things. But again, they're not combat soldiers uh, either, obviously. Um, well, by 18, I should say that from the beginning of the war, the Union Navy allowed African Americans to serve. Sailor was one of the major occupations of black men in the period before the Civil War. If you have ever read Herman Melville, you know this. Many blacks served on whaling ships and other kinds of ships, uh, transport ships. Um, and uh, the Navy needed all the, you know, it, it was one thing to put people in the Army, but to be in the Navy, you needed to have some nautical experience. So very early on, blacks were allowed into the Navy at the lowest rank. I don't even know what that is exactly, the ranks in the, in the Navy, but they couldn't be promoted to officer or anything, but they served on ships. And of course, ships are racially integrated. You can't have segregation on a Navy ship. It would be impossible. Um, well, in 1862, the debate over black soldiers intensifies for reasons that you can imagine. Casualties are mounting, enlistment in the army is falling, the enthusiasm for the war, and basically, the army needs every man it can get by this point. It's becoming clearer and clearer. There was still strong objection. Some people said it would be a step toward racial equality. Some people said it would be degrading to white soldiers to have them fight alongside of black soldiers. Some people said blacks are just not capable of being, uh, of being soldiers. This ignored the Haitian Revolution, the role of blacks in the American Revolution, in the wars of the Caribbean. African Americans had proved they could fight just like anyone else. Um, but they said, no, 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 they're, they're either they're either petrified, they would never fight against white people, they'd run away, they're so intimidated, they're so subservient that as, if you give them guns, they'll leave them in the field and the Confederates will get them, they'll run away and drop the gun. Or, an opposite and contradictory point of view, they'll run amok, they'll become crazed, they'll massacre every white person they see, they're, they're out of control, so you can't arm black people in the army. But, so these arguments were used uh, over, and then the border states were very much opposed to the recruitment of black soldiers because they feared this would be a, a, begin the process of undermining slavery there. Since at the beginning of the war, or in 1862, most recruiting would have to be done in the border. The large, the only place in the, under northern control with a large number of black men was the border states. So that's where black soldiers would have to come from, and the border states were very adamant they didn't want the Union Army, just look at what this would do to slavery, going on to plantations and farms and recruiting black men who were slaves, offer that without the permission of the owner to join the army. This would obviously undermine the institution of slavery, uh, which was you know, still existing in the border. But as I say, as the, as the realization sinks in that this is a long, bloody war, um, opposition to black soldiers diminishes. Uh, even conservative Northerners by mid-1862 were sort of turning the tables. They're saying, well, wait a minute. How come only white people are getting killed in this war? A white man, this is a Philadelphia newspaper, a white man is as of much consequence as a Negro. The lives of white men can and ought to be spared by the employment of Negroes as soldiers. Why shouldn't they get killed too? Um, in July 1862, Lincoln issued another call for troops, 300,000 volunteers. Now, when Lincoln does that, he's calling on the states to provide these troops. You know, most recruiting was done on the state level. That's why most soldiers serve in units that are called the 4th Ohio, the 22nd New York Artillery, or the 54th Massachusetts, a black unit, which we'll see in a minute. Lincoln sends out a call to the states by population to raise a certain number of troops, and they do it by going to the militia or going to volunteers, etc. The call for 300,000 volunteers in July 1862 was met with a, uh, 
unenthusiastic response. Let's just put it that way.